When I arrived at his home and asked the lovely grandma Irene what her greatest wish was, she replied, I wish I could bake in this kitchen again someday. So, should we make her wish come true? Now let me show you the rest of Irene's beautiful home. And let's see what kind of lovely stains and messes we can find. <laughs> and let's deep dive into her story. At the same time, let's give her home a thorough cleanup. Oh, there's a fridge. I want to look inside. Wow. Irene loves yogurt. Oh, some carrots, I think. Oh, she's tried to cook something, but... Man, it's impossible to cook here. For me, this kitchen looks just perfect. I just want to clear all the trashes right away. But at the same time, I feel sad because Irene is the same age as my own grandmother. And I'm very close to her, so it feels like I'm helping my own granny here. This is the living room and oh man, what a sad sight. When I arrived here, Irene was sitting on that couch. Imagine an old lady sitting there in the middle of trashes. There's a coffee kettle and some buns and a lot of dishes. And Irene doesn't have any clean dishes anymore. The apartment also smells, obviously, because there's a lot of rotten food. And all these milk cartoons and jars smells bad. And this is Irene's bedroom. She sleeps in her bed every day. Even though, to me, the bed doesn't seem so bad, but the floor and the layers of dust do. Let's peek into the hallway. It seems to be filled with just cardboard boxes full of trashes. If I'm being honest, this is definitely one of the most memorable and best cleanings I've ever done. Ooh, some carrots! <laughs> this apartment is really dirty, which I love, but Irene is such a lovely person too. Watch till the end if you want to find out how she's doing today. Irene told me she had never understood people who don't keep their homes clean. She admitted that right away, that she had judged messy people throughout her whole life. And she also confessed that she was deeply ashamed. She sat on her couch sharing her story. But before that, I want to remind everyone that no matter your age, you can always seek help. Talking has always helped me. And that's why I don't carry any heavy problems with me. Because therapy is a way to solve any issues I have. Online therapy better help is also a reason why I'm able to do these free home cleanings. They sponsor and want to help people too. So a huge thank to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Did you know that BetterHelp has over 30,000 licensed therapists in their network and can match you with a therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased opinions? With BetterHelp, you will have access to a wider range of expertise than what may be available in your area. I know that sometimes starting therapy can be hard. It may be difficult to find a therapist to match your needs, and some people even find the face-to-face -face interaction uncomfortable. That's why I love BetterHelp. It gives you all the benefits of therapy, but from the comfort of your own home. With BetterHelp, you can attend to therapy via phone call, video call, or even via messaging, if that is what you prefer. You can choose whatever you feel the most comfortable with. If this sounds good to you, check out BetterHelp throughout this link on the screen. To get started with BetterHelp, you just fill out an interesting questionnaire to help assess your needs in therapy. And in most cases, you will get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Isn't that cool? you also be able to schedule sessions with your therapist when it's convenient for you. And if the therapist isn't a great match for you, for any reasons, you can easily switch out a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance or who is in your area or anything like that. 
I mean, people spend hours at the gym perfecting their bodies, so why not give your mind such attention as well? Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a happier, healthier life. If you want to try out BetterHelp, go to betterhelp.com slash and get 10% off your first month. I have also linked them in the description below. Now let's get to Irene's story, which was very therapeutic for her to share. Irene wasn't just anyone. She had spent her whole life working in a city job, a career that she was proud of. She had many friends, not just in her apartment complex, but outside it too. Irene told me that she had lost her husband when she was around 60. But with the help of her friends and talking, she managed to get through the tough times. And what about her home? It was just like her life appeared to be. Neat and organized. Like normal home. Cleaning for Irene was just a normal part of life. Something she did without even thinking much about it. Like many of us do. Wow, this sink is beautiful. Beautifully dirty. It gives me jiggles. I love it when the foam turns brown. It means there's a mix of dirt and soap. <laughs> Then, at the age of 68, Irene retired and things started to change, but not for the better. Imagine this, the same Irene who couldn't stand a speck of dust began to let dishes pile up. Alright, let's dive deeper into how Irene's home, once so neat and tidy, transformed into something she hardly recognized. It's hard to imagine, right? It was really hard for Irene when she told me this. She kind of couldn't understand it either. How a person's space can change so drastically? Well, here's how it happened for Irene. It all began in this kitchen, the heart of any home. Irene, who used to clean up right after every meal, started leaving dishes in the sink. Nothing too crazy, right? It's still quite normal. At first, it was just a cup here, a plate there, but soon those dishes piled and piled up, covering the counters. Soon, Irene noticed that she had no clean dishes left, so she began using just one cup for coffee, one plate, one fork, one spoon, and so on. She would wash them right before she ate. But next, the trashes came along. When the trash bin was full and trashes started to overflow, instead of taking it out, Irene would just press it down, trying to make room for more. But there's only so much you can press down before it starts spilling over. So at this point, Irene's solution was to start collecting trashes in cups. She didn't feel like taking the trash out for reason we'll get in the later, so she began piling up trashes in other places like between wall and the microwave. She left them on the table and eventually when the cups were full of trashes and the plates had food remains, she began leaving trashes on any empty surface too. At this point, when there are, let's say, 30 pieces of trash on the table, what harm is there in having 50 or then even 300? She kept thinking she would take it all out tomorrow. But instead, the mess started creeping into the living room, where Irene spent most of her time. She watched TV and ate, leaving chicken wings, banana peels and bread bags on the table. A month later, Irene noticed mold in the bread bag, so she covered it with a plate, not wanting to see what was happening. Empty food containers and old newspapers began to pile up on the coffee table and the floor. It wasn't long before the couch where she used to sit and read or watch TV was surrounded by clutter. Items and trashes speeded into the crevices of the sofa, 
Stress is like water, it finds its way into every nook, filling available space. It became easier for Irene to just leave things on the floor rather than finding a place for them. By the way, guys, I tried to calculate how many loads of dishes I've washed. So many, and still counting. And the clutter wasn't just everyday items. It was old mail, magazines, a lot of things Irene no longer used but hadn't thrown away. There were also food wrappers and over time some food that got forgotten and started to rot, adding a bad smell to the mix. And of course, if anything was spilled on the floor, it just stayed there. What was the point of cleaning when it was all buried under the trashes? Crumbs from food packages and spilled coffee ended up on the floor. Eggshells had nowhere to go. Everything, absolutely everything Irene brought into her home, she couldn't throw away. She even tried to take the trashes out to her balcony, but it even started to smell there. She didn't know what to do. But the mess didn't end there. It became overwhelming for Irene. Let's have a look what we have here. Oh, it's oranges and really bad smelling something. <laughs> what started as a small change in habits grew into a mountains of clutter and trashes that seemed too big to tackle. The thought of cleaning up became daunting. The more the mess grew, the less Irene felt like she could handle it. She felt unsafe, especially with the weight of her other problems making every task feel a hundred times harder. And that's how little by little Irene's home changed from a place of comfort and cleanliness to one filled with clutter and chaos. It's a stark reminder of how closely our environments are linked to our mental well-being and how quickly things can spiral when we are struggling. And I have to say, it's just not the food leftovers that stinks here, but these milk cartoons smells bad too, and they are probably rotten. And here's the order how we collect trashes. We put cardboards and papers in the separate bags then dirty dishes goes in the cardboard boxes right there and they will be washed later and pretty much everything else goes in the mixed waste i'm not sure guys did i say it already that but i'm cleaning with my brother sunday so we are having fun maybe i said it already i'm so sorry if i did <laughs> i don't remember anymore <laughs> But this is fun. Look, I'm separating all the cardboard from the trashes, so I'm recycling as much as I can. It is so satisfying. When I came here, Irene was very nervous and ashamed. She was a small woman, tiny and cute, and she talked fast. She told me her story, just like I told you. And sometimes she would stop and apologize for speaking so quickly, which I thought was really cute. She didn't ramble at all, and it was really interesting to listen to her story. She wondered out loud many times, multiple times, how she ended up like this, how this became her home, is this even her home? She didn't recognize it, and she was embarrassed that I saw it. But it was funny because at the same time, she kept telling me that I've probably seen worse and I just like it, but still she felt so embarrassed. Oh boy, more cups, more dishes. I don't know how many cups and dishes she has, but they just keep going. I'm so glad that Sander is with me because he can keep taking the trashes out all the time because the trash sheds are really far away so taking the trash to them takes a lot of time many hours actually uh, probably you won't see it from the video but it takes time more dishes 
Are you surprised? <laughs> oh, this is stuck, I guess. Ah, oh, damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you ready to see the surprises under the sofa? <laughs> this made me so happy. Ah, oh, one of the best sofas. Oh, oh my God. So satisfying. <laughs> But yeah, what happened to Irene after she retired? She told me that retirement itself was a bit stressful. Sure, it was a nice thing, but it also changed her life. Like many old people, Irene lost many social connections, although she still had friends from this apartment complex who knew about her situation, even though she didn't want anyone visiting. She had been open about struggling with cleaning, but soon she also started having physical health issues that made it hard for her to walk properly. So, depression, loneliness and dealing physical health together led to this situation. Irene became a prisoner in her own home. But thankfully, Irene doesn't have to stay in this prison forever innocent as she is. Sure, she has made mistakes and regrets them, but she's been very, very brave in asking for help from me and letting us to clean. Think about it if I had to vacuum this floor. <laughs> I mean, I do use a vacuum cleaner and it's quite good for cleaning things like sofas or carpets or rugs. But vacuuming a floor that's this dirty and crumb filled would be pretty tough. <laughs> I also don't want to use a vacuum cleaner in these homes because often there are worms and other bugs among the trashes and they could spread to other apartments and into my car with the vacuum. So that's why I never bring any fabric cleaners or instruction cleaners either. I only take cleaning tools that I can clean after the job is done. And everything doesn't have to be perfectly clean. This is enough! Many people comment and demand more and better for me, asking why I don't do it perfectly. Why I don't wash the sofas, walls, rugs, carpets, beds, <laughs> etc. Why isn't okay good enough? This is already really clean compared to what it was. I mean, cleaning doesn't have to be an all or nothing mentality. It's okay to just clean okay. <laughs> Remember that. And after this, Irene can clean by herself. I always believe that these cleanings are a push towards something better and get people excited to do it themselves too. Nothing will change if I do everything completely and then they just continue in the same way. Of course I can do it, but there's no point, I think. I give a starting push. I show that, hey, you can really clean up your home well. And then they can make it even better themselves. Then they can feel the control. Many say that after the cleanup, they feel a huge boost. <laughs> they wash dishes and laundry, buy new furniture, and life seems to start on new tracks. It's not the point that I do everything for them, because I know that they can do it by themselves. I just have to help them a little bit. A scraper is the best! Did you know that you can scrape off your worries too? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> okay, first you can try to scrape them off, but if that doesn't work, try better help. It definitely works. <laughs> oh, there is some beautiful paintings, so Sandra is going to install them. Mm, so cute! This living room is going to be so clean, so nice and fresh. I can already feel it. Let's clean the rest of the floor. Ah, some crumbs. Yes, 
satisfying. Oh, there is a huge stain there. Okay, let's use Cine's kitchen cleaner. Choo -choo -choo, spray, spray, spray. And let it fork there. Like a few minutes, five minutes or so. And now let's scrape. Okay, scrap that is ready. In Sander's hand, but he didn't use it. Because the stain came off so easily. Yes, perfect. Good job, Sandari. <laughs> After the cleaning, Irene came home and sent me a message that really made me cry. I mean, I don't often get very emotional about cleanings. Of course, it's always wonderful to help and hear that I've helped people, but somehow her words really hit me. She texted, Oh, Auri, it's already so nice to be here. I have no words to thank you enough already. I'm getting my life back. And heart emoji. I replied, yes, so good that you ask for help. It's going to be a really, really nice home. We might not get all the dishes washed, but we'll wash as much as we can, and I'll organize them tomorrow. Irene replied, I'm really grateful, and I can arrange the rest of the dishes now that there is a bath to the dishwasher. And I also wanted to ask if you found my wristwatch. Suddenly, I can't remember when I last wore it. A few weeks ago, maybe, but I believe it will turn up, and if not, Life goes on, but you've achieved so much. I replied, good. Yeah, send the site and put it in some box, 100%. And Irene replied, no worries, I have time to look for it. Thanks anyway. If you want to hear about what Irene felt when her whole home was clean and what her apartment looks like a year after the cleaning, Watch next week's video. This is such a lovely cleaning story. See you in next week. Bye. <laughs>